Hey guys, Brittany here, and today I'm going to show you how to turn an adorable quilt block into an amazing pot holder. To start, we're going to go ahead and have our quilt block already made, and we're going to take a piece of back fabric to match and lay it right side down on the table. Next, you want to lay your insole right right over that and top it with your quilt block right side up. You're going to want to go ahead and use the quilt block as a template to trim your insole bright and your back fabric. Be sure to include the half inch seam allowance with that as well. Next, we're going to take all of our raw edges and line them up together. We want to use pins to keep them in place as we've done here. We're going to use a walking foot to put these layers together. So if we want to use the half inch seam allowance and just sew all of these together and be sure to take the pins out as you go. We're gonna create the binding next. So we're gonna take our piece of binding that we have and bring it halfway inside of the top of your pot holder. You wanna pin it in place and be sure to line up the edge of the binding with the raw edge of your fabrics. What you wanna do next is start by using your walking foot again, stitch the binding to your fabrics right here along that half inch seam line. Next, you can see that we've already attached this first part of binding to our quilt block. We stitched using our walking foot along the half inch seam allowance and did a corner back stitch here. We want to go ahead and take the rest of our binding fabric and fold it over towards us using a 45 degree angle and give it a nice finger crease. Then we want to take the rest of the binding and fold it down like this and line the raw edges up just as we've done here. Now next we want to go ahead and repeat the same step by using our walking foot and stitching it on the half inch seam allowance all the way down and giving it the nice corner back stitch here. We're going to repeat those same steps for the rest of the sides until it is completely attached. We're then going to flip our pot holder over and as you can see here this is the excess binding from what we've attached and the excess binding for the loop here. We're going to do a double fold towards the pot holder lining up the raw edges here, and then once again over those stitches, and the binding should wrap over the stitches by about 5 eighths of an inch. So after we've placed this corner, this double fold over, we're going to simply pin it in place, and we're going to do that for all of the sides here. As you can see here, our pot holder has already been pinned in place, and we have our loop here, and we did a double fold for this one. So we folded it once, and then we folded it again on each side. Give it a nice finger crease, and this is gonna be the start of our loop. So after you've pinned everything in place, you wanna go ahead and start stitching the binding to your pot holder. So as you can see here, we just started using a walking foot and stitched all, of the, all around the pot holder here. And we want to go ahead and finish by stitching up along the loop here, just to keep those edges together. The next step that we do is wrap the loop around to the back. And you can make the loop as big or small as you would prefer. And then we do a nice tack down stitch right here so that it keeps both sides together. And as you can see here on the back, whatever excess fabric you have, you can easily just snip off and be good to go. You'll have your finished pot holder here that'll look great in any kitchen.